Hey guys, it's Intercate from AmigaLove.com. A little over three years ago, one of my close friends got this idea into my mind to try and assemble a team that might reverse engineer one of the most holy of holy upgrades for the Amiga 1000 computer, the Rejuvenator. These boards are extremely difficult to locate. And when you do locate one, it's a total feeding frenzy. They are expensive, they're old, many of them are battery eaten and broken. So why not try and figure out if we could reverse engineer the board and make them available to the Amiga community all over again. I went on an amazing journey with some really amazing men. To get to this point today, we were successful. As of November of 2021, the Amiga Rejuvenator is absolutely a reverse engineered success. And it's not a cash grab. These are not for sale. I'm not making a business out of it. None of us intend to. Maybe someone in the future will try and do that. All of the files, all of the knowledge, all of the information across three years of trying have been released to the public 100%. For anyone that has the skills or has a really good friend that has the skills, like in my case, to build their own. They're still kind of expensive today to build, mainly because of the parts and chip shortage, but we are 100% done. All of the data has been released to the world and everyone else now can finally, that has the, has the means and the, and the desire, can finally experience the Rejuvenator for themselves in all of its majesty. And it really is an impressive thing to experience in this gorgeous package. So what is the Rejuvenator? Some of you I know are asking. It made it on par with its younger sisters that were being sold in the late 80s and early 90s. Right off the top, it gave you a kickstart ROM. You don't need a floppy disk to boot your machine anymore. That's pretty cool for Amiga 1000 fans. It came with a real-time clock, which was a nice little added bonus, but that's also the reason why there are so few rejuvenators in the world anymore. They were soldered right onto the damn board. So a lot of rejuvenators were battery corroded and destroyed, like a lot of Amigas. But most importantly, well, I should also mention it has a video port. So a small handful of video cards could be used at the time. But the really big upgrade that this gave Amiga 1000 fans that they always wanted, but were never really given any kind of attempt to upgrade by Commodore in particular, or even third parties, because it was so difficult. The ability to pull out your little Agnes that it came with and replace it with a fat Agnes, or even a fatter Agnes that would give you up to one megabyte of chip or even two megabytes of chip. Back in 1990, when these were being sold, it was just a shocking concept to even wrap your head around that your Amiga 1000 could play with the big girls. Hell yeah, she could. And Greg Tibbs, the inventor, had these cards released between 1990 and 1991 uh, through a third party. And as such, he believed less than 800 had ever been sold. And out of that 800 today, Realistically, we're probably looking at maybe 400, if we're so lucky to have that many still in circulation. Well, those days are over, folks. Those days are over. Why? Because now all of the plans, all of the data, all of the knowledge, everything that it took this international team to come together to make this a reality, it's all out there. If you have that knowledge of how to build these yourself, or you have the means to, uh, pay someone to do it for you, you can now have a brand new Amiga Rejuvenator. Now, the only catch to that is you kind of need to have, or you really have to have, an Amiga 1000 that has a daughter board set up. If you have one of those cost-reduced Amiga 1000s in Europe or the United Kingdom, you're kind of out of luck. You're probably going to be looking over at the vampire or something like that if you're really wanting some crazy horsepower. This is not an accelerator. 
All this did was bring our beautiful Amiga 1000s up to par with her sisters at the time. Greg basically, single-handedly, did the design work that he felt, and a lot of Amiga 1000 fans back in the day felt Commodore should have done themselves. Some of the folks inside of Commodore saw what he had done and tried to help him. And in the very early stages, the CEO of Commodore at the time was gonna help too, but then started to get a little scared that if these started to sell like hotcakes, no one's gonna wanna buy the Amiga 500 anymore, their top selling Amiga of all time, or even potentially the Amiga 2000, which seems a little far-fetched because that's all about upgrading to the teeth and you're not gonna do that with your Amiga 1000. You don't have all those slots. What did Greg do? He got onto CompuServe and basically shamed Commodore. And within a matter of weeks, they changed their minds and said, no, no, we fully support this project. And we're gonna put the chips out there that uh, rejuvenators would need. They're gonna sell those chips individually so that people out in the world could actually upgrade their board. Now, it was still expensive back in the day. We, <laughs> we kind of whine and complain these days about costs of things because, you know, these, these computers are hobbies. But back in the day, holy smoke, things cost more than they do now <laughs> in terms of pure dollar amounts. Long story short, if you're an Amiga 1000 fan, and if you've been following this project or you're just hearing about it for the first time, I'm going to have a link down below in the uh, description that goes straight to the man who, in, who did most of the work in reverse engineering this board. His name is Joe Carter, based out of Idaho. But there's going to be a link to the GitHub where all of his files are stored. And I'm going to walk you briefly through how we finally got across the finish line where we've been kind of stalled for the past two years. The board was actually reverse engineered more than two years ago, and we had a fully functioning prototype, which made everybody kind of lose their damn minds for a little while. But it took us an additional two years to finally find a way to get past that last hurdle. And that's what I'm going to talk about here in the finale video, <laughs> at least for Rejuvenator 2. I should also mention that that does what by putting it on GitHub doesn't make it a static repository. In fact, it's organic, right? It has the potential to evolve. And even right now, very intelligent people are already taking Joe's work and pushing it even further into the future. And I'll talk more about that at the very end of this video. While Commodore was literally paying Amiga 1000 owners to trade in their machines to get brand new Amiga 2000s at a heavily reduced price, Greg Tibbs was finding a way for Amiga 1000 owners to hang on to their original investment and push it into the future the way many owners deeply believed Commodore should have offered, but never did. When Greg Tibbs showed his Rejuvenator board at an AMI Expo convention in Washington DC in 1990, he told me, J Minor came by on the show floor and I showed it to him, and he was so happy that he hugged me. Jay knew this was super badass and something to be celebrated. I happen to be the very fortunate owner of two original Rejuvenator boards. One is apparently a very early model, and the other a more common production model. So I started first by hunting down Greg Tibbs, and we ultimately shared conversations over the phone and via email. He not only gave me his blessing, but he honestly wanted to try and help, if only as a guiding mentor, to see his invention brought back to life. He could see that it was important to someone, and then it made it important to him. And while all of his original files had been thrown away years ago, he still remembered an incredible amount of detail around all of the people, places, and things he had to do to get his rejuvenator to market. Sadly, Greg died in January of 2020, so he never got to see his board built to completion. But he did get to see it reverse engineered most of the way, thanks mainly to an exceptional talent and man named Joe Carter. Joe cloned the entire board using a pre-production bear board I had sourced from one of the owners of Expert Services, the original manufacturer of the boards back in 1990. I also sent Joe one of my original rejuvenators. Joe not only cloned the board, but he also fixed a few bodge traces and other errors he discovered along the way. In fact, he assembled and tested one of his brand new rejuvenators two years ago in early 2019, and Greg did get to see that success, which made him very proud. 
The only piece of the puzzle that remained were four special chips that contained equations we couldn't pull out, nor was there any documentation anywhere to simply recreate them. Several attempts were made to read the chips, but we simply couldn't get it to work. Before completely giving up, I contacted another legendary engineer in the Amiga community based in Germany who goes by the moniker Matze, also known as Matthias Heinrichs, out of Berlin. I took a chance and shipped one of my original rejuvenators to Germany, in the hopes that Matze could unlock the secrets of the four chips. Keep in mind, this was in the midst of the pandemic, and packages being shipped to Europe were sometimes completely disappearing, or taking several months to clear various checkpoints. It was totally nerve-wracking, following that shipment tracking. But guys, it did make it to Germany, and eventually to Matthias. A couple of months went by, and then he stunned us all by declaring success. He had found a way to read the four chips. But how did he do it? The following is how he did it in the words of Matthias himself. I was lucky to get an ALL07A programmer by Hilo Systems on eBay for about 60 euros and still had a Dell laptop with a real parallel port. I installed the software on a USB stick using FreeDOS for booting. The device driver is pure DOS in typical EGA graphics. Ironic that a DOS program saved this project. Next, Matthias inserted some chips into his reader to better understand how to use it. Once done, he had to select the appropriate chip from a huge device list. The AL007A can read even ancient Soviet ICs. Notice the checksum 0000 field. I hit R for read. The checksum changed. Hit D for display. Whoa, a read protective device usually shows only ones or zeros, but never mixed. That means they are not read protected. I was so happy seeing those cryptic ones and zeros. Save that thing. Repeat for rejuvenator board PAL chips U28, U29, U30. As quickly as we could, we started to try and burn the equations to our own ROMs here in the United States. After a few misfires, we got it working and well, guys, the rest is history. Soon, some of us built our own brand new boards, updating the bomb on GitHub and a few other files along the way. And as of November 21st, 2021, almost three years since I started this crazy project, we officially have a GitHub project updated to the point where others can follow in our tracks and use our research and findings to build their own boards. So guys, that's how the Rejuvenator 2 was brought back from the dead, literally. I mentioned this in the very beginning. The project is still evolving and will continue to evolve. In fact, it might even evolve at a much, much more rapid pace now that so many people have their hands on all of the incredible work that Joe and that Matthias and the rest of the team members put out there for everybody. What do I mean by that? Well, remember this video port? This is really an antiquated, kind of obsolete video port, realistically. In today's world, there are a lot of much easier, cheaper ways to get high quality video out of an Amiga out onto a more modern screen. And so one of the things that people are already starting to talk about and focus their attention on is how to update this into a more modern package that might export HDMI signals potentially, um, or how to update the Agnes to not use the really hard to find Amiga 3000 uh, Agnes, which are expensive if you can even find one because they're so rare, but to use the much more common two megabyte Agnes. Work is already being done on that, where you might actually have a jumper that allows you to select between, am I using the really hard to find Agnes, or am I using the more common two meg Agnes, or am I using the much, much more common one meg Agnes? That kind, of, that kind of stuff is being worked on. So this is already starting to evolve into the next phase of wherever it winds up. I wanna close this video uh, with my heartfelt thanks to the Tibbs family for um, for being so cool. And uh, and when hearing about this project, I hope it 
I, I hope it gave them some sense of uh, happiness that Greg's uh, memory um, shall not be forgotten um, by a much larger group than just family members and really close friends. I hope that they understand that his name is hopefully becoming more of a household uh, name in the Amiga lore, as I think it always should have been. Um, and anyway, Greg, I wish I wish you had been here to see this day. I really wanted to meet you in person and have a beer with you somewhere. Uh, I actually had fully intended on getting on an airplane um, whenever this day finally arrived and flying to Ohio and hopefully meeting him in person, shaking his hand and honestly just sitting sitting and listening. I really, we had some amazing conversations about his past. I really wanted to sit down and listen to those in person and just let him talk and ultimately let him know that we all in the Amiga community really do appreciate what he did offer. And it really is an important part of our lives now. And to just let him know that we cared and that we really thank him. I've been asked by several folks in the past few weeks if we plan to sell rejuvenators and for how much. Frankly, no, we aren't going to sell anything. This entire enterprise was to bring the rejuvenator back to life. All of our time and money spent was entirely for the betterment of the Amiga community. This is a hobby about a computer we all love, and that's it. And we've all gotten what we ultimately wanted brand new rejuvenators that cost about 150 bucks in parts alone. That's not including the custom chips they require, of course. So even if we did bring these to the market, we'd likely get hit with all of the FPGA crowds on one side pointing out misters and stuff like that, or the software emulator folk on the other side, or the vampire people, and just a lot of drama we really don't need in our lives, you know what I mean? But for those of you out there that want to keep it old school, and want one of these so you can use your own kickstart ROMs and one or two megabyte Agnes chips, I'd be willing to bet they'll start to emerge in 2022 on both sides of the pond. Joe, on Greg Tibbs' passing. He has left a mark so wide through his innovations that he will always be remembered by Amiga 1000 aficionados as the creator of the ultimate upgrade. A toast to Mr. Greg Tibbs, the genius who has directed a very willing portion of my life and has taught me so much in the hobbies I love. Much respect, good sir. So remember guys, keep that Amiga love flowing and we'll see you next time.